the message of the cross. Preach it. Gospel salvation. Preach it. Heaven and hell. Preach it. Preach Jesus and the blood he shed for you and I. Preach Jesus and the blood he shed for you and I. Preach Jesus and the blood he shed for you and I. Preach Jesus and the blood he shed for you and I. Preach it. Hello, hello there. My name is Benjamin Aliko and I welcome you to Preach Jesus Time. Today, we're going to speak about a very important topic, and I believe your soul will be uplifted. So be patient and listen. The title of my message today is Christ in You, the Hope of Glory. Christ in You, the Hope of Glory. Now, a lot of people have lost hope. Yes, maybe your situation looks very hopeless. And some of you are looking for money to go back to school or to further your education. Some of you are married. Now looking for children. Okay, I know some of you you were attacked by armed robbers and you lost a lot of things. And some of you were raped, have been victims of rape, and some of you pastors or men of God have had affairs with you, sexual affairs, and then it has dampened your hope and your faith. And some of you you've seen very bad work situation and then you don't see any way out. Some of you because of sickness, you've been sick for long. And you've lost hope in life. Some of you are thinking about committing suicide because there was a divorce. Your marriage went to divorce or you had a divorce. Some of you have just broken out of a relationship and your, your heart is broken. Some of you lost a loved one. Okay, it could be someone very close and very dear to you. Some of you, someone who promised to help you out suddenly died and then your hope is dashed out. You don't know what your life will turn into and then you've given up. Well, there's good news for you today. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now let me look at the let's look at the scripture in um, Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. It says, To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It says, the scripture says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Have you, have you, first of all, let me start by asking this. Have you accepted Jesus? Have you made him the Lord and Savior of your life? Because he has to be in you. And that is your hope. Some of you have placed your hope in a, in a man. Okay, the man is taking care of my fees. So that becomes your hope. And then it is, it is drawing away from the Lord. It has drawn you away from the Lord. And then your, 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 your hope in the man will soon be shattered. But when, listen, when you have Christ Jesus, that is your hope. Because there will be moments when you will be down, I tell you. That is life for you. You cannot escape those moments. You would be down totally. There will be moments you will be heartbroken. But listen, the, the, the trick is when Christ is in you, then that becomes your hope. And hope is life. When you don't have hope, when you are, when, 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 when you are hopeless, you, you, are, you, are thinking, you are thinking the way of hope. Oh, let me commit suicide. Some of you have lost hope in and the fact that you've not gotten any job. It is making you become frosters and then arm robbers. You are learned to tell lies just to make ends meet out of it. Listen, the answer that we are all skipping today is Christ Jesus. If you will go back to him again, he will make a way where there seems to be no way. Listen, Jesus is the only one to have died and resurrected. And then on the cross, he said, it is finished. He has finished every good work. So, the only thing for us is to believe in Him, is to believe in Him, in our pain. Let's go to Him in prayer. Let's kneel. Let's worship. Let's bow down to Him. He has an answer. Every situation. Listen, the Bible is a very precious book. In fact, it is life. The word says, John chapter 6, verse 3, it is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to, they are spirit and they are life. So, this is Jesus' own words. They are life. So the Bible is a, a book you do not have to underestimate because it is life. As you see it in my hands, it is life. It answers every question. Every question. And, and it has characters that you, we can identify it depending on your problem. So if you go to him, he has a way of doing this. It's his thing. Um, if you look in the Bible, Joseph was a dreamer. And then he dreamed dreams and then his, his, his brothers hated him for his dream. And then at a point his own father rebuked him because of his dream that they are going to bow down to him 
one day. And his brothers hated him because they envied him. They sold him out. So the, the, so the situation looks hopeless. Like how on earth am I ever going to find myself again? And all that God has said towards me, how is it going to come to an end? Some of us, you've received prophecies and it's been years and you've still not seen anything. Some of you have been prayed for several times and you've lost hope. Well, I tell you, do not lose hope. Do not lose hope just yet. Still believe. Because one day will be it. You may never know this. Jesus Christ. That is, that is what you done. Listen, there was a story of how he, Jesus, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. You know, Jesus was told, but he delayed. When he was told, Lazarus was actually sick. That's when you read John chapter 11. You get the accounts inside. Lazarus was actually sick, but Jesus delayed. When he went, he was dead. And Martha and Mary told Jesus that, Lord, if you had come early, you could have saved the situation. But did he know that, listen, Jesus was going to do it anyway. So your situation may be that hopeless, okay? You've written yourself off. Some of you wanted to start a business. You started one, two, three, they didn't go on while well, you stopped. You stopped. Some of you are praying for financial help and breakthrough. And then, and then at a point you stop believing God. Some of you stop going to church because you have lost hope in this church thing and prayer and let's go and I'm still not seeing anything. Well, it's not true. The devil is taking out of a certain blessing, a certain breakthrough. Listen, maybe as I'm speaking to you, your time is really very, very close. But as you shift away, from the Lord, then the devil comes in, gives you suggestions, and suggestions will lead you to destruction. So at the end, back to Lazarus' story. So at the end, Lazarus was resurrected. There was resurrection for Lazarus. So God is sometimes looking for a dead situation. He's looking for people who come to me and say, Lord, I've tried, I've tried, I've tried, still, I'm not seeing anything. I don't know the way out. So you become weak. And then that is when God becomes strong and He shows Himself. Sometimes God Himself intentionally wants to break us down. Because sometimes the way we choose that this is how God is going to bless me, He, he changes it. He says, no, that's not the way. I have chosen this way for you until we find that way. All that we'll do will come to nothing. So don't lose hope. Just hang on. God is going to send a miracle to you. He, he's a God of miracles. He's done countless miracles. And then he's not going to end with you. His plans for you are good. His thoughts for you are good. It will end in praise. I tell you somebody. Somebody, this is your moment. This is your period. Just hold on. Listen to what the Lord is saying. Listen to what the Bible is saying. Listen to what Jesus is saying. Look at the life of Jesus. Why do you think he came? He came so we could find hope in him. That's why he died on the cross. That you and I, one day we would need him. And he said that Christ in you. The hope of glory. See, the hope that you have will lead you to so many good things and opportunities. Once your hope is dashed and the devil has squashed down what God has for you, his intention for you is destruction. So when you read John chapter 10 verse 10, he said the thief came not but to still kill and destroy. So don't let the devil steal your hope. That is his plan. To steal your hope, to end you before you even start. Some of you are in the middle of something beautiful but you are looking back. Because now you are suffering. Now you are sacrificing. And everybody seems to go against you. And it's like, see, you are doing the wrong thing. You may have friends. And all your friends are in the world. All your friends like partying. All your friends have boyfriends. All your friends are having sex, are fornicating. All your friends are committing adultery. And you feel the old one out. Well, there is hope for you. Just move out of their line. And stand in line with Jesus Christ. And that will be your hope. At the end, you will see that God has come true for you and then his promises for you will rather stand because the devil will only steal kill and then destroy you but god came or better still jesus christ came to give you life and life in abundance so i trust that you have been blessed by this short and powerful message i want to pray for you some someone i don't know your situation but i believe as i pray just take this prayer serious i believe as i pray god himself will answer you Maybe you are thinking of, um, of, 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 of giving up. You've, you've, said, you've, said, you've said giving up messages. Maybe you are, you are sick with cancer. And then if you have written letters, uh, sad letters, letters that show that you are going. There is still hope. This is not how you are going to die. God is saying, this is not how you are going to die. Maybe there's a tumor. That you have a hole in your heart. 
Maybe you are really broke and this moment you need money. Maybe you are staying with a man because of financial help and a man is taking advantage of you. Maybe you got your job because you, you, you allowed the manager to sleep with you and you are, he, he still continues to sleep with you because that's how come you got the job and you're asking God, I feel like stopping it. Well, it's a good thing. I want to pray to you. The Spirit of God will touch you wherever you are, whether you are lying on a sick bed, whether you are looking for an opportunity, whatever your situation. I may not have mentioned your situation, but just believe God and as I pray. Father, I pray for everyone who was who has listened or who is listening. The Lord, you, as the word says in, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Lord. I pray for the grace of salvation and for the hope of, 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 of their calling. The reason why they are alive, Lord, to be fulfilled. Some of them, the sickness is not unto death. I pray for their deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for those who are broken hearted, those who have been deceived. Those whose money have gone waste because you did a wrong investment. The Lord, you send hope, you send angels to minister to them once again, like you did unto Jesus after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights and resisted the devil. This is your big to someone who is listening. You are not going to go to the man again for sex because God has broken loose, certain yokes which was entangled in you in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive life, those who are sick. Receive prosperity, those who need to prosper. Receive wisdom, those who need wisdom. Receive anything that will help you in this life. Receive the hope of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God, we should bless you. Well, I don't end this without giving you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. So kindly say this up to me. Very important. Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. I believe in you there is hope because Jesus came to die to give me hope so that one day I will be in heaven as my name is written in the book of life. God richly bless you. I'm Benjamin Aliko. Enjoy your day. Bye. Jesus and the blood he shed for you and I preach Jesus.